What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Kentaro Super Kuma 9000 SNES inspired Raspberry Pi 3 case. So this case does have a functional power and reset button with the installation of a script. It's available right now on Amazon for $19.91 and I think it looks pretty good. So inside the box, obviously you get the case, you get some screws, a screwdriver, you also get this really awesome heat sink. This is one of my favorite things about the Kentaro cases. This is just a massive heat sink and they also include some thermal paste if you wanna use it. I definitely recommend it. As you can see, it's inspired by the North American Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It's very similar to the Kentaro Super Kuma, except this one's over 9,000. On one side of the unit, we'll have access to all four USB ports plus our Ethernet. On the back side, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, HDMI, and our power in to the Raspberry Pi. Moving around to the other side, we can easily access our SD card. You can pull this out with your fingernail instead of having to get a set of tweezers like some cases need. I just want to show you the prototype I received about three months ago. So this is the Super Kuma 9000 on the left and the prototype of the Super Kuma 9000 on the right. Color's a little off on the old prototype, as you can see, but it worked well. I've been kind of beta testing this thing, and I really enjoy using it. And while we're here, let's do a quick comparison of the Super Kuma 9000 and the regular Super Kuma. As you can see, the Super Kuma is pretty white. It doesn't match the original SNES colors at all, but the new 9000 is doing a much better job. I'm gonna go ahead and put this together. I'll also show you how to install the script. It does come with a manual and everything you need to know is in that manual. So if you miss a step here, refer to that. This case is compatible with the Raspberry Pi 3, the Raspberry Pi 2, or a Raspberry Pi B+. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 here. That's my go-to. We're just gonna set the heat sink on top. Now it does come with two sets of screws that look very similar, but one's a little longer. The longer screws will go towards the inside of the case to hold the heat sink down, and the back side of the heat sink will be held down by the screws coming up through the bottom of the case. The case doesn't come with a fan, but you can add one later on. On the PCB, there is a spot to plug a fan in. After you install the script, if you have a fan installed, the fan will only come on when the Raspberry Pi reaches 60 degrees Celsius. So I think that's pretty awesome. It's not running full time. It's not going to annoy you all night long. Now you're just going to line everything up, put your four K screws in the bottom, and we're ready to install the script. So I have a fresh SD card flashed with the latest Retro Pi. It's really easy to install the script, but you will need a keyboard connected. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through it. Let's move over to Retro Pi now. All right, so first things first, you need a keyboard connected to your Raspberry Pi. You will also need to be connected to the internet. You can either use Ethernet or Wi-Fi. I just plug my Ethernet in here. If you want to connect to Wi-Fi, go to the RetroPie menu, scroll down to Wi-Fi, and connect to your network. With all that out of the way, we're going to go right back to the Emulation Station menu and press F4 on our keyboard. This will bring up a terminal. From here, you need to type out this command exactly as it's shown on screen. It is space and case sensitive, so it needs to be typed out exactly like this. After you're done typing it, triple check it, and press enter. It can take up to five minutes for everything to install. It really depends on how fast the servers are going that day and how fast your internet is. So give it a little time. When it's finished installing, we're gonna type sudo reboot. Now this is just gonna reboot the unit. And your script's installed, you're ready to use the power and reset button. Let's see how it works. I'm just gonna turn it on here. And my Raspberry Pi is booting up. You will get a red LED on the front of the case. And you'll also get this Kentaro splash screen. Now a lot of people have been complaining about this splash screen, but it's very easy to uninstall it or disable it. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Let's wait till this boots up. So the LED is really nice here. It's not a blinding bright LED. It's just perfect for a little case like this. All right, so let's check this reset button real quick. We're just gonna push it one time. It's gonna reset the unit. 
It runs the script that we installed to safely shut down or safely reset. So I actually like the Kentaro splash screen, but we can remove it by holding the reset button for five seconds. I actually just count to about seven. The LED on the case will flash a few times when it's done flashing. The splash screen will be disabled. It'll go solid when we're ready. So there we go. Splash screen is disabled. We'll reset one more time so you can see. And that's it. You got your script installed. You're running the Super Kuma 9000. Now I really do like the design of this case. I love the power and reset button, but one of my favorite features is that fan function. The fan will come on when the pie is over 60 degrees Celsius and it'll go off when it goes below 55. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll leave links to Amazon down below. They're $19.91. Now 1991 was the year the SNES was released in the United States. Not sure if it has anything to do with that, but it's a pretty cool coincidence if not. I'm also going to leave links in the description to Kentaro's website. They do have a contact form if you run into any issues with your case. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.